Hey tribe, welcome to HD Designs Crochet HDDC. I'm Heather, I'm 31 years old, and this is my podcast all about crochet, the granny square, and all that goodness. I'm a crochet designer, and I also teach new and aspiring crochet designers how to create an income from their crochet. And knitting, we are not excluding knitting, we are including knitting this time, because I got stuff to show you. So, if you are returning, welcome back tribe, what's good, what's happening, and if you're brand new, hi, hello, and welcome. Um, yeah, it's been a hot minute, it's been a few hot minutes, because back in July, I caught the C virus, <laughs> I got the vid, and um, in a nutshell, it was vile, and... Here we are six weeks later and I'm about back to normal. Um, yeah, I got it and it set in really, really quick. Um, I got the fever, I got the, I got, I got everything, but thankfully I didn't need to go to hospital. Um, I was put on antibiotics and steroids because I got tonsillitis at the same time and the f the first sort of three weeks were just gross absolutely gross absolutely vile um thankfully I had Brad to help me with everything everything um and since then I have improved every single day and thank god I am improving every day so um yeah that happened and i have never ever ever experienced fatigue like it um just so bone tired that when my body decided i had no choice but to just sleep um it's the only time that i have ever known myself to not knit or crochet or read or just anything literally just lie in bed and not move because that's all I could manage. Um, Brad would come up and check on me just to see if I was okay. There's a few days that I cannot remember, like I don't even think I was conscious for them. And um, when I started to get better, he was like, I knew that something was wrong because you didn't even try and knit. He's like, I've never known you to sit there and not knit or not crochet. You didn't have any yarn anywhere near you, like, that's a huge indicator in my life that things aren't right um so because of that i i wasn't posting on social media i wasn't making anything and yeah that was that was really frustrating um when i started to feel a bit better and wanted to be making something I spotted another spider on the wall the season has changed and i'm noticing a lot of spiders in the house it's only little so I'll leave it for now um what was I saying when I started to feel a bit better I wanted to knit, like knit or crochet but I just could not focus to do it um but thankfully that's lifted now and I have quite a few things to show you because it's been like two months since you had an update on any of my projects so I'm gonna jump into that I just wanted to say um a huge huge thank you to anyone who sent me a message which was so so many of you um on instagram or on youtube um asking me if i was okay with um suggestions of what helped you through the virus and things like that it was all gladly received thank you so so much it made me feel really loved and really valued so thank you um and then i also just wanted to say anyone that is going through it just hang in there keep taking on fluids get yourself an oximeter um from like amazon so you can check your oxygen levels because it's really reassuring um make sure that you're taking painkillers as often as you can and hopefully you can eat good food and yeah it's minging that's all i can say so i have a whole heap of stuff all around me to show you um 
and I'm thinking where do I start? I'm gonna start with what I'm wearing, which is this granny square number. This is my chunky version of my revival pattern. Um, I made a DK weight the first time round and then I decided to make it in chunky, which is two strands of double knit held together. I love, love black clothing, so I decided to hold black throughout. And yeah, I'm really pleased with it. Um, if you get my revival pattern, which is on my website, and you can find it through Ravelry and Etsy and Love Crafts, um, I've put notes in here on how I did the chunky version because um, I decided not to get it graded and have people pay for a separate pattern. I just put in instructions of what I did. And you can follow that along and make your own to the size you want. I think if I was to make another one, I would just take out like one row of the grannies just to make it a little bit tighter. But I like that it's really oversized and it's really warm. And um, then we are going to go into finished objects because I have actually got a finished object. So when I wasn't very well and I was forced to stop, I'm just picking all the alby hair off of my clothing when you've got a dog that is a lovely auburn gingery coppery color who's not supposed to molt but does black yarn or black clothing shows up every single hair so that has been influencing my yarn color choices but we'll get on to that um so when i wasn't feeling too well i was forced to stop i couldn't crochet knit move anything just had to focus on breathing. Um, had to choose whether I wanted to breathe or eat. Anyway, we're done with all that. Um, I, when I had to just stop everything, it really made me reassess what it is that I want to be doing when I'm able to. Um, and now I'm capable of doing all the things, thank goodness. Um, I have been really, really focused on those things that I decided. So I knew that I wanted to reduce my stash, which is here behind me. So out of all of these tubs, I just want the two with my double knit in. I want to use up all of the rest. And the reason for that is because I am moving into a garden office in the springtime. So we're converting a shed into my yarn HQ. Um, and I don't want it to be stuffed full of stuff but I know without a doubt I need to keep my acrylic for my granny squares and as I show you my whips that will become abundantly clear why. Um, I love a granny square in case you're new here. I love a granny square. Um, but there's also other things that I've always wanted to make and that I've never had the time to assign to or stuck it out um, and now that I'm a full-time crochet designer I have more time to make and I can choose what I want to focus my time on to. So it was these projects. So, um, I am gonna show you, so this is the inspiration behind my finished object. This is my Aran jumper or sweater. I'm British so I will say jumper. Um, my Aran jumper that my grandmother made me for my 30th birthday. So it's coming up for two years old now. And I absolutely love them. Look at the texture, all of the details, all of her stitches are perfect because she's a Virgo and she's been knitting since she was four years old. So she's got a good, a good few decades of her uh, experience. So I've always wanted to do this myself, but I've always found it very complex, very intimidating. And also like, I want to make clothes that I'm going to wear a lot of and I wasn't necessarily sure that I would be able to integrate these into my wardrobe which is so silly because now they've come round and they're back in fashion and you'll always, even when you go on any website, you'll always find some sort of cabled cardigan or jumper it's just maybe the silhouette changes so um, I started one of these back in lockdown when the first one came round because I figured, well, we're home and we've got more time. And it was a lot, and it was hard work. Um, I decided I was going to make, let me find the, there we go. 
I was following this pattern, it's from the Knitting Vintage book by Claire Montgomery and I went with the Tangerine Aran cardigan which looks like this one, it is this one and I chose to use some Aran that I got from um, Audi, so Aran weight is like worsted weight, uh, it's a step up from double knit and I finished it when I started to get better, I picked it up, persevered and I'm going to show you it. Ta-da! So this is my Aran cardigan that I've made. It's the first one and I'm going to put it on in a second so you can see it. It's got this, um, I think it's called bramble stitch, which is like this bobble stitch. I like how effective it is but I really don't like knitting it because if you make a mistake on it, it's a pain to go back and sort out. It's got the double cables on the sleeves. I love the cables. It's got this diamond pattern on it, which is also on the jumper that my grandmother made. Mine isn't as neat as hers, but it got neater as you can tell. Um, but I'm not as keen on the double moss stitch in the center. It looks a bit too fussy, but it was fun to work on. The back has got a big panel of the bramble stitch, the double diamonds, the cables. I love how symmetrical it all is. And then for the buttons, I chose to go with odd buttons from my stash because as I'm stash diving on my yarn, it didn't make sense to go and get new buttons. So I just picked out ones that really complement it. And I actually, I put these ones on by going through as a cross, but then I put this one on in that way and I much prefer it. So I used these ones, which, are actually shown in the book as the type that used to be on our own um, pieces like sweaters, cardigans um, and I've got two in different colours so I put those on and then I just went with the sort of muddy earthy tones um, this one's got some moss green in there and then this one I'm really really pleased with it I'm really really pleased with it let me show you what it looks like on it's so lovely um, there's just a few things I would change one of them being that the buttonholes are really close to the edge and I would put them further in because when I do the buttons up I feel like it pulls a bit so it'd be better anchored a bit further in um, and then also just the neckline I think I have really, well I do, I have really narrow sh shoulders so um, it could just do with being just that bit tighter on the front but to be honest, um, the more that I knit the more that I will feel comfortable altering um, garments but as my first one I didn't want to go off piece um, and make it harder for myself so I'm really pleased with it. I learned so so much doing this and I had so much fun doing it as well I would also make the sleeves a bit longer I like my sleeves quite long um, and because it's a raglan it's supposed to sit right under your armpit which then gives me a bit of a gap other than that I absolutely love it and I think I've worn it every single day since I finished it which was last um, it was a week ago today and I took some really nice pictures because Brad, my partner, took me on a surprise date to a sunflower maze and we actually had quite good, it was overcast but we had really good lighting so I got some finished pictures. So I'll put those in for you to see now. which way all oh, the pressure that way or that way I just love it I'm really really proud I'm really really pleased with this can't wait to show my grandmother I know she's going to pick up on the bits that I've done wrong, like I picked up in the wrong place here and my decreases aren't as pretty, but 
I'm really pleased with it. So having finished that Erin cardigan, I went back to another one that I'd started. Now I start all the things, I know I do that, and I don't necessarily finish them. And I've been sort of reflecting on this, why, why do I do this? And there's a few reasons. One is if I find something really difficult, or I'm super tired and I don't have the brain waves, I will start something else. And I think it's because when you start something else, you're just casting on and it's maybe just the ribbing or if it's granny squares, it's just it's just a stack of granny squares. You don't have to think. And I think I know it's that mindless um, part of the project that I enjoy. So um, I think in those, like, in those situations, I'm now trying to rather than cast on something new I'm thinking of other ways and other things I can do so for example you might just be spending time looking for a new pattern and um, it might be watching some tutorials on a certain skill that I want to learn or it could be caking up yarn something like that so that I'm not just starting all the things I'm also um, leaning towards making more swatches as well so if there's something I want to try rather than doing like casting on the whole garment I'm just trying to do like maybe a cable or so that I'm still getting a little break from the big projects I'm doing but I'm not completely derailing my focus um, and I had actually started a new Aaron project um, a few weeks before I got ill it was a week before because my partner had gone away and I decided I wanted the project to throw myself into and obviously the 100 million I've already got weren't going to do. So I started a new one, which I'll show you. It's in this project bag that my friend Nicole made for me. And I absolutely love it. Um, and I actually made the back panel, which is this one. I did the whole of the back panel whilst my partner was away. I think I did the most of it actually and then I finished the last bit off as I was starting to get better and it's um, a really intricate cable pattern which is what drew me to it and it just looks so beautiful and this yarn is a whole lot more rustic than the Audi yarn so it's got a really good definition and really good texture to it so I did that and I made it crop because I wanted a cropped um, cardigan. Let me let me show you the pattern. It's a vintage one. I got this pattern from a charity shop that I visited, and it's this. So it's actually a jacket, but I'm gonna be wearing it more like a cardigan, I think, or like a like an oversized cardigan. So yeah, a jacket, whatever. Um, and it's got pockets, so I really wanted to give that a go. Can you see she's got her hand in her pocket? Um, so I decided to make it cropped because that calls for hip length. And I don't really wear my cardigans to that level. They either need to be much longer so they cover my bum or it needs to be like top of my hip to my waist. Um, so I did that and then I did the fronts which was quite hard whilst um, this is what I found hard when I wasn't feeling well but to be fair to myself it's a completely new thing that I've never learnt before luckily Nicole my friend gave me knitting support so I actually made both the fronts um, I'll just show you the details now because I've cropped it it is going to be small and I, I did that intentionally um, so I did this front and it really didn't take me long at all obviously because I cropped it it's so much shorter so I think there was like three repeats and then I hit the decreases and then I did this one as well and I definitely learned a lot when decreasing across cables and making it a whole lot neater so I've got the front so I've got the back and that just leaves the sleeves um, however the whole reason I started this project was to use up some of my stash um, and I have this yarn, it's by Polo & Co, it's French, it's 100% wool um, 
and it's the Aranor worsted weight and this was the line and I've got 600 grams of it but the back and the front used up just under 250 grams so then by the time I've added the sleeves in at a push I might have used 400 grams because I like my sleeves a bit longer which would have left me with 200 grams and then I was starting to look at other projects I could use it in um, maybe I could use it in like a bralette to go with and things like that but because it's such a rustic yarn um, I just got myself caught on the stitch holder because it's such a rustic yarn I don't think it would feel nice as a bralette um, and I figured that actually maybe I'd made the wrong choice in going with the smaller cropped size because um, as a like a cardigan or a jacket it'd be nice to put something under it so that I could layer up which is what I've been doing with my other cardigan that I finished um, I've got a store bought fluffy cardigan and I've layered that underneath so that I can wear it in like the autumn days without being too cold um, and I couldn't really find anything that I wanted to use the remaining 200 grams on I did think about socks but again it's quite rustic it doesn't have any nylon in it to reinforce it so I thought that it would be better used if I made a bigger version of this um, and I'm still quite happy with the crop but I wanted to add in one more repeat so that it was just a little bit longer than it is because it comes right to my waist and I want it just below like in between my hip and my waist so having made the front and uh, the fronts and the back I then started another one which is here so let me undo my needles I started again and I made the biggest size there is um, <laughs> so I went from the smallest size which is my size to the largest size so it's big it's really big um, but I decided that a really big jacket would be nice to have I am a little bit unsure whether I went too big and what the fit will be like as it's a raglan but I do have a jumper that is going to be that I have a store brought jumper there's the same width as this um, and that fits me fine and I wear most of my jumpers oversized because as I said I like to layer up um, so I have got that on the needles I'm not gonna lie I'm a little bit over it now um, I'm not enjoying the pattern as much and there's been a few times where I've just wanted to abandon it and start something else but I'm making myself persevere. I'm actually on the decreases, I um, don't know if you can see but I'm on the decreases and I've got like 25 rows to do before I'm halfway through the decreases and then I go on to a more severe decrease so right now I'm like decreasing two stitches per row and eventually it'll be like four stitches per row because it's quite a triangular decrease very steep um, and then it won't take me long to do the fronts I think the difference on the back is like 40 to 50 stitches so that feels quite a lot whereas on the fronts the difference is like 20 stitches so it's not going to be um, it's not going to take me much longer to do an extra 20 stitches in width and an extra repeat which is like about I think it's 16 rows um, to make the right sizes for those so I left them as they are for now just to show you what I've done because I thought if I rip them down without you seeing you're not going to see any of the work I've done it's going to look like I've done nothing and then I'm part way through this um, I absolutely love the double cable though and I'd like to incorporate that cable but much bigger on a design that I have in mind. Um, again, I am 
not modifying the patterns, I am just making them. The only modifications I'm allowing myself is to shorten the rib or make it longer if I prefer and to change the length of the finished item. Um, so as I said, this one's going to, rather than be um, sort of mid hip length, because it was a, the, what I measured for the size it suggests, it would be halfway around my bum and I either prefer it to be below or above. So I'm going with above. And then the rib, I've halved the rib. I prefer a smaller rib, so I've done that. Other than that, I'm completely sticking to it to the pattern because my whole reason for doing this is not only to de-stash but to learn new skills so that I can eventually start making my own patterns um, and so if I start tweaking it and changing it then I'm not really learning um, from it because when you're new to something if you're also trying to make changes um, you make your journey a whole lot slower so that's the back panel um, I'm using five and a half mil needles and just a couple of my tips because I know a few of you um, watch this because I'm a crocheter first but want to knit or you do knit but you find this a bit intimidating so a few tips that I have for you. Um, number one, if you want to make it then just do it because there's no point you starting something like a scarf if you don't want the scarf because you're not going to finish it. Whereas I keep envisaging myself wearing this and that's what's keeping me going to finish it. Um, then my other tip is stitch markers. So I've got four on here, as you can see. I've got this Haribo one, which I think came from What Mustard Makes. Um, this one I think was gifted, but I can't remember who from. And these two were gifted from um, Siobhan's Crafts, who also look, kindly gifted me some yarn, um, um, as well as what I created next. They were a joint gift, Tanya. Um, I remember I was looking for them on one of my other podcasts. I found the safe place, so they're on here. These stitch markers are the start of a section. So the double moss stitch here, I'm not that keen on double moss stitch, might I add. Um, I think I actually prefer the bramble to the double moss. Anyway, anyway. Um, <laughs> this is an entire section, and then there's some more double moss there, and then this is an entire section, and then some more double moss. And um, it just means that at a glance, if I get lost during a section, I know where it ends, and so I can work my way forwards or backwards through the section to figure out what I should be doing. Um, my other suggestion is if you want to try something like that but find it intimidating, swatch the cable. So I actually swatched a slightly different cable here with this Aran and once I'd swatched that and realised how simple it was, then when I cast on the jumper, the back for this one, it wasn't as intimidating because I'd already done a similar, similar cable. You can see the differences here, that's got the crossover there and there's only like three crossovers whereas this one's a lot wider. Um, but then I knew that if I can do this then I can do it within this um, without getting overwhelmed and then obviously if I make a mistake in this it's a bit easier to fix than when you've got like 139 stitches on here. Um, and also a swatch is quicker than this because by the time you've done a repeat on here, um, 139 stitches 16 times is a lot more than 50 stitches 16 times. So yeah, swatch your cable and then you will feel a lot more confident. I really like that cable. And um, my other tip is to write out your pattern if you need to. So I, for example, on my left front and right front for this, I had actually written out what they were and then I divided each section. So I've put row one and then I've put the, whatever's needed for the um, double moss and above it I've put how many stitches I've, it's 
got in there. So in that section there's 11, in that section there's 8 and so on. And then I've put the Trinity stitch, pearl one, knit one, then it was the each panel for the cables. So that at a glance I know what I should be doing for row, row one and row two. And then um, I then just refer to the pattern for what I should be doing for each section. So for example, you do you repeat row one, row two throughout, but within the Trinity stitch, across the 16 rows, you've got the different stitches you should be doing. So then I would just refer to the book or the pattern. And then I just kept a tally like this. So I knew what stitch I was on, what row I was on, sorry. Um, and that just makes it super simple to follow. It means that I can put it down and come back a couple of days later and know where I am and not have to try and work it out. It also means um, that I could see progress that I was making. And it also means as well, because on the back I did three repeats before the um, decreases, then I would do the same on the front. But if I hadn't been keeping the rows, then I would have had to have figured that out. Not difficult to do, but it made it easier for myself. So I'm finishing this jacket before I start any more Aaron bits and pieces. But if I need a break, I'm allowing myself to swatch um, because I'm trying to tell for one knitting project and one crochet project. So I will show you a couple more things on the knitting and then we'll jump into the crochet because I've got loads, loads. So for knitting, I wanted to show you this book it's the Knitting Cable Source book by Nora Gorns. I think it's Gorn. And it's just an amazing book. I got this because I want to learn how to do all of the cables. I mean, look at those. They are stunning. And I would love to have my own Aran jumpers, cardigans, accessory patterns come out as well as the granny squares. I love that it's something that's so old and traditional and well known, but you can make it modern. Very much like what I do with the granny squares. And I think I'll always be fond of Aaron knitting because I've seen my grandmother knitting Aaron my entire life and it always seemed so difficult and unattainable and out of my grasp, but I've taught myself how to do it. Um, my nanny who is the one that taught me to crochet and knit. Did try to teach me Aran, but I think um, it was definitely something I just needed to persevere with by myself. Is something that you need peace and quiet for. That would be my other tip if you want to do something like this. Carve out half an hour's peace and quiet for yourself. Um, I make a whole thing of it. I get myself a nice drink. I um, might put music on or I just sit in complete silence and I do this for like half an hour to an hour every day um, because when you've got TV and noise and other things going on it's really hard to keep track when you're trying to do something so complex and I think when my nanny was teaching me she was also talking and we had the TV on and whoa it was just so much to process. Um, so I haven't told her that I've managed to knit Aaron, but I'm due to see her at some point, possibly January, and so I want to have all of these ready so I can just take them and show her, and I can't wait to see her reaction when she realises that her, her granddaughter, the only grandchild out of the entire lot she's got, who's taken to knitting and crochet, has learned how to do Aaron. And you never know, I might have my own pattern out by then. So shh, don't tell her, she doesn't watch this. No one needs to let her know if you do see this and you know her, keep quiet, it's a surprise. Um, so I got this book because I want to learn different cables for my designs and I can't show you a lot because there's so many um, charts and things, but I will show you that. And just look at the amazing, amazing cables. Um, and also the colours. Now you will notice when I crochet it's all the colour. When I knit I've gone for very neutral tones. There's a few reasons for that. One, my grandmother's always, always knitted in the neutral colours. So like 
this color um and then i purchased this one because i really like it i really like my gray brown colors like greege um absolutely stunning and then obviously the color i got from um aldi is like an oatmeal but i think the reason for that is um because it's so complex doing this in black would be some sort of form of torture um and because of the texture you don't want a yarn that's too busy because you won't be able to appreciate it as much which is why i end up going for solids um and then because alby keeps molting everywhere i'm not gonna lie i am drawn to these colors more than i am black for stuff that i wear around him because i am sick of pulling out yarn and hair and my hair and alby's hair off all of my clothing whereas when you've got hair this color against this yarn you can't tell so yes that's all of my knitting um i'm just going to show you this yarn that i was gifted from mr b yarn i absolutely love it this one is asparagus and then i've already caked up this one which is um sprout and these are earmarked because i i've earmarked these to make a cropped jumper I did start a little swatch, I just wanted to see what it would look like because it's not completely solid, I wasn't sure, but yeah, it's going to look really good. Um, I did a really deep rib on that one and I wouldn't actually do it that big, I would half that. But look at the texture. So I am going to, once I've finished this jacket, and I can see myself wearing it with, oh, I've got so many style ideas, I'll show you when it's done. Um, I'm going to make this one, and I've got 400 grams of this, um, which would be enough to make a cropped jumper, quite a small one I think, like close fitting rather, but then I decided that I was going to have this yarn as well. If you remember, I was gifted quite a bit of yarn, and um, I've split it with my nanny, so when I see her in January, she will get her lot out of it. And originally I was going to keep the yellow, which is called Ray, the slate, grey, and the sprout. But I decided that I'm going to swap the grey slate for the asparagus. And I'm going to use this as like the ribs, the cuff, and the neckline. So yes, that is out and there to give me... Um, spur me on g me up to get this done and in effect by the time i have finished it i'll have almost made it twice because i've done the back and the two fronts already um and with the green one i'm like 75 percent set on using uh this pattern let me find it 75 percent set because I just can't give you a 100% guarantee, you know what I'm like. It's from this book, the Aaron Look book um, by Peyton's. It's a really old one. Why is there no date? There's no date, but it's issue number 161 and it says like three, it's got the old currency on here and then in brackets 15p. So it must be around the time that the currency changed, which I don't know when that was, but it means it's old. Okay, it means it's old. Um, and I'm 75% sure that I want to make this jumper but I want to do it oversized and cropped and I might even make it dropped shoulder rather than raglan. Um, and I know I said I wasn't going to be making many changes, but I'm about ready, I'm about ready. And let me show you um, up close. So that is the cable that I swatched because I knew I wanted to have a go. And I absolutely love it. Um, 
So yeah, that's my knitting plans. I also have plans to make quite a lot of socks because as I said, I've got a lot of four ply in my stash, which is fingering weight that I also want to use up. Um, so the majority of my stash is iron weight or worsted weight and then it is four ply or fingering weight so socks sweaters cardigans all those sorts of things you'll be seeing lots more of those but now we need to go on to the crochet so let me make some space okay crochet all that good stuff um i have got a few things to show you one of them being this number which is called all sorts I sent this to be tech edited before I got ill. It's a granny square crochet cardigan with plain sleeves. And I've made it in chunky weight, which is two strands of double knit held together. And I did the squares in the same way that I did this. Though you know what? I actually prefer these squares where it's solid color. So definitely learnt that. Um, I sent that to be tech edited before I got ill. So now that's done and it needs to be tested. So I'm going to put a shout out for testers if I haven't already. And then I've got this one that needs to be tech edited, which is a double knit granny square cardigan with plain sleeves. I did the granny stripe sleeve, um, whereas the all sorts has got, um, I used half trebles. So those two are moving along. And I've also made a ton of granny squares. I've got loads in here. I've been making them for a blanket because our bedroom is having a makeover and I want a granny square blanket to have in there. Um, it just wouldn't be our room without granny squares, would it? So the majority of them I've made and they've got my hair on it so I was I've made them and I've woven the ends in. There's just a few that don't have their ends done. Um, because I just knew that if I didn't do the ends as I went along, they weren't gonna get done. Um, <laughs> and I want to join that in black. And I absolutely love the black glitter yarn. So this is James Seabrett Twinkle Fashion DK. And I've used this for a lot, a lot, a lot of projects. And I want to put my granny squares together with it but I've got a secret ingredient that I've not told you about for the blanket I'm going to keep that quiet until it's done so when I want to work on something but I don't really have brain space I just get my two tubs of DK yarn and start making granny squares um, I'm not sure how many I'm going to need because that will be determined by the secret ingredient so I need to at some point sort out the secret ingredient so that I can determine how many squares I need and really get going on that. Um, and then I've picked up another project because I want to get this one finished and it is granny squares of course and it was put together in the twinkle yarn. And this is a sleeve. Um, I have been working on this jumper which is almost done. Oh, it's so bright. Um, I put it all together yesterday and then when I tried it on, I decided that the sleeves were too long and I would take a row off. So I actually took off a sleeve yesterday. I've taken off a row. I'm gonna reattach it and try it on and just make sure that it is a length that I'm happy with. Um, because it's drop shoulder, I just over calculated on the sleeve length. I like my sleeves long, so I had calculated it to come across my palm, but because they're granny squares, it just looked a bit too long, whereas if it had been a cuff, it would have it would have felt nice. Um, so that needs sorting. This is my victory jumper. It's entirely granny squares, and it goes with this skirt, my victory skirt, which again is entirely granny squares. Now, today's task is to take off the um, waistband and reattach it because I want to add in more anchor stitches to the elastic. And then once I've recorded that tutorial and I've recorded, uh, then I can get it written up and get photos taken so that that can go and be tech edited. So 
that's the granny square project my crochet project at the moment but i also have a couple of bags that i'm working on they need some sewing um so hopefully next time you see me for an update in the end of september the bags will be done um so I'm actually making a smaller version of this bag, which is called Iconic. I undid the handle. It's got a chain handle and it's got this lock. Um, and I'm making a smaller version. It opens up, I've lined it. Oh, it's got yarn in there. In my head when I was making it, it was gonna be smaller than satchel size and uh, I made it a little bit bigger. So, that's iconic and I have actually released that pattern and I'm also going to make a smaller version. They're very similar so I think I'm going to do a deal where I will just email everybody who's purchased um, iconic and offer them the smaller version for like a pound or something um, so that you can have both so that if you wanted to make the smaller version you can do at no like no huge cost. It's just I've changed not only the size but the mechanism so this one's gonna have the magnetic clasp it's got a couple of needles on there whilst I finish it up um, rather than the lock so that's not far off being done um, and then once Victory's done I will be going on to um, this stack of granny squares I was gonna redo revival and do a revival 2.0 because I wanted to change the sleeves um so basically upgrade it and I'm still tempted to do that but then I'm also tempted to do a different design I've got in my head so these are next anyway I've earmarked these next which is why they are here um I've made the squares bigger than the original as well um, I wanted it to be a more looser, oversized fit. Um, I've given instructions in the pattern how to do that anyway, but um, yeah, I thought I would just make them bigger. I was originally going to join this in black, and now obviously I've got a little bit of an aversion to black. <laughs> um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do, so I think I might just stick to my guns and just black or glitter black um, and there's just certain clothing that I just don't wear around Albie which is fine because like today when he's at daycare I can just keep away from him it doesn't mean that his hair keeps away from me though <laughs> um, so that's all of my whips that I am focusing on at the moment I did also buy another couple of books I wanted to show you I got this one called granny square flare and it's got loads of different granny squares in there um you all know i love a granny square and so i wanted to get something that would give me some different types of granny squares to try i also love that they're all neutrals and there's actually a completely neutral blanket in here um which i thought would be really nice to try the sampler blanket it's a nice way to try all of the different granny squares and it could be a good way to use some stash maybe if I did it in Aran weight then we'd have a really nice warm chunky blanket um so I may start doing that when I want to do samples because I am a bit bored of my main projects um and then that book is by um Shelley Husband and I got the UK terms edition and it's quite a lot thinner than I thought it would be because the um knitting cable book is like hardbound whereas this is soft it's not a bad thing um and then I also got this book so it's 50 crowbay crowbay right here 50 crochet cable stitches um with front post bubbles I've shown you it before but I really want to be able to not only do knitted cables but crocheted cables so that there is the choice so I really want to be able to do knitted cables and crocheted cables which then means that when I create my own designs I could potentially create a crochet version and a knitted version so I know that I really really want a cropped cardigan 
and I could make a knitted version and a crochet version so that if you are a crocheter first, you can do the crochet version. If you're a knitter first, you can do the knitter version. If you like me, are happy to do either. You can pick or do both. Um, it also means that I will be able to use more of my stash up. It also means that I'm going to be learning even more skills that I really want to learn. And because all of what I am making is stuff that I want in my capsule wardrobe that gets a lot, a lot of wear, it would be nice to have um, a few options. So if I want a cropped cardigan, I can make one in a neutral and then maybe make one in more of a standout colour. And then I've got both the options, which then keeps the colourful part of me happy, but also the neutral part of me happy. Um, and I can layer them up so I could wear both at the same time. So yes, for now, that is everything to show you. I really hope that you have enjoyed watching this and the whips and the finished projects I'm working on and where I'm headed to. Um, I could show you more swatches I've made. I've got a notice board down here with so many swatches on it. But for now, we're just gonna stick with that. So that is everything for today's uh, review. That was my August and July in review. Everything that I've been doing, everything that I've been working on. Um, you will find more on TikTok and on Instagram. I am posting over there about my D stash mission, what I'm working on, um, so many good things on there. And um, you will also find all of my patterns on my website and everything is linked below. So I really hope you've enjoyed watching. Let me know out of everything that you've seen today, what your favorite one is. So is it my nanny's Aaron sweater jumper? Is it my Aaron cardigan? Or maybe it is this one, which is called Renewal. Maybe it's this one, which is called All Sorts. Maybe it's this one, my Chunky Revival. Or maybe you like Victory and you're looking forward to seeing the crocheted jumper and matching skirt. So let me know which one's your favorite below and I'll make sure that I show you more of it next time. Until then, take care, happy making, I'll see you soon.